This is the new second generation Land Rover Discovery Sport and right away, I'm sure you can agree that it's quite a handsome thing. It sits on the new PTA platform just like the Evoque, made of mixed materials so that it's lighter, more rigid and can accommodate electrified platforms. So let's start with the front end. You get a completely new grille design, new headlamp graphics and a redesigned front bumper. And with this car equipped with the R Dynamic package, the front bumper looks even sportier. And it's the same at the back as well. Gone are those round taillight graphics from before and what you get now instead is one that looks like a cleaver maybe? But that's not all. Land Rover says this one comes with what they call the black pack. This means blacked out mirror caps, a blacked out grille, some black patches on the front bonnet and a black discovery badge by the tailgate. In fact, it's so black you can't even see the word sport camouflage next to the number plate. But that's okay because I think with this red, the R Dynamic package and the optional black pack, the discovery sport is actually something that people can describe as good looking. Without it though, sort of like your girlfriend without makeup, you know what I mean, right? Don't mean to offend, I only speak the truth. What I really like about this side profile is how they've highlighted this C pillar in such a way that from afar, it kind of looks like a speedboat, doesn't it? Although what I found to be quite strange is this discovery stamp here by the front fenders. Considering that this is the one with the black pack and the word sport at the back is in black, why didn't they just highlight this in black? Instead, it's just camouflage there, unnoticeable. That being said, what you would really notice though, considering how the car has such a dramatic appearance, is the lack of appeal on the wheels. Considering the car has such a dramatic appearance with a contrast of red and black, these 20 inch alloys in silver just look like they don't belong there. You know what this reminds me of? You know, 6, 7 p.m., you're at a coffee shop or a mama, you see this dude, very smartly dressed in work attire, button-up shirt, tucked into fitting slacks, and then you look further down, it's slippers. Mm. I know you've seen that before. I've personally gone through that before, until I left that life and now I wear whatever I want. Just like with the Discovery, go wherever you want. Now, as for the boot, absolutely spacious. Land Rover says there's over 800 litres of space, but I would disregard that because what they essentially did was take into account sort of this section as well, whereas most car manufacturers would take into account sort of this section. So in actual case, you're looking at about 500 over litres, which is still plenty enough from where I'm looking. More than enough for three full-size luggages. You also get a tonal cover here, but once you've removed it, there isn't actually a place to store it. Now with this being a 5 plus 2, obviously you have two additional seats at the back which you can easily erect with the straps here. But once you have, all you're left with is enough space for a shoe. You can't even fit a backpack in there. But once you've folded the third row seats by pulling the straps here, along with the second row seats with these switches by the corner, Land Rover says it can actually fit a washing machine or an equivalent size item. Unlike the previous Discovery, the architecture in here is just a whole lot more modern from before. You get a new center console design, you get a new gear lever in replacement of that pop-up rotary thing. I also particularly like these trims that you get on the dashboard, on the center console and also the door. It's actually very sporty looking. Up front here, you get the same infotainment system as the Velar and the Range Rover, but unlike the Evoque that we reviewed previously, this one only comes with the clear sight ground view. That being said, what it has that the Velar and the Evoque doesn't have is the wading depth display where it actually shows you the water level that the car is going through. Now, if you've seen our previous Velar and Evoque reviews, you'd know that the new generation of Land Rovers now come with a separate display below the main infotainment display. However, this being a Discovery Sport, it's a little more different, a little more straightforward. So you have two rotary dials here to control the temperatures. However, press this fan speed switch here and it becomes a dial to control the fan speed. 
press the car icon here and it becomes a dial to control the different drive settings. I like it, I think it's actually really cool. Land Rover says the Discovery Sports cabin storage has been increased by 25% with redesigned door bins and a much larger 7-litre armrest storage. And I believe them. Here's why. See this tray here? Remove that. Open your armrest. Then you have this lever here to remove the cup holders. And what you get is just unbelievable. I'm almost speechless. With this USB ports here, you can probably even fit a portable rice cooker. Boil some rice while you're on a long road trip. It's just incredible. From what I can remember, the SUV that I last saw with this amount of space is the CRV, and I think this is even bigger than that. Convenience-wise, you get a separate USB port up front here and also a wireless charging pad. I also really like how the seats feel. Very comfortable, very supportive. The materials may not look as posh as the one that you find in the Velar or the Evoque, but it's actually got a very sporty appearance to it. In fact, if you ask me, it actually looks like the seats from the Golf GTI, especially with this red piping here. Now that we've established that all this looks a whole lot more modern, sporty, and even rugged, here are the butts. For a 400,000 ringgit car, I find it inconvenient that I have to manually adjust this telescopic steering and there are no electric controls. Secondly, the switches for the window by the window pane. It's just not a very natural position, not very intuitive. It does require some getting used to. But more importantly is the forward visibility. If I'm honest, it's quite poor. This is one of the very few test cars that I actually have to be seated in the highest position to see forward. Good thing is, there is enough headroom so it's not too bad. I think the biggest appeal of this Discovery Sport has to be the back seat. You get a massive panoramic view that once open from the rear occupant's line of sight, it just feels so open and there's a lot of natural light as well. And then there's the space, plenty of leg room, plenty of knee room, and sufficient headroom. But that's not all, you can even recline the seats like so. And if you feel like it, these seats can slide front and back as well. It's pretty useful actually. There's sufficient storage space as well behind the front seats, by the door bins, big enough for you to fit a 1.5 litre bottle, and even in the armrest. However, if I were to nitpick, it would be on the lack of USB ports. There's none back here. Instead, what they gave us, like in the Evoque, is a 12 volt socket. It's 2020, 400,000 ringgit car. I think it's just unacceptable. This being a 5 plus 2, obviously we gotta check out what is it like at the back. Now, this is why I think 5 plus 2s should just die, cease to exist. Car manufacturers should just stop making these things. Either make a full-fledged seven-seater SUV like the CX-8 for example, the one with the center aisle for easy access, or don't make it at all. Get people to buy MPVs or something instead. Here's why, check it out. You climb in rather ungracefully, right? And then, once you pull the seat back, that's probably just enough space for the second row passengers. And back here, there is almost none for me. I mean, foot room will be sufficient if you are wearing maybe a size 5 shoe. And if you're 180 centimeters like me, this is actually quite torturous, I must say. Even for a trip from home to dinner, 20 kilometers, 30 kilometers, I wouldn't find this at all comfortable. The one silver lining though is that comes with aircon vents on each side, cup holders as well by your ankles, and rather interestingly, aircon controls as well. But I need to get out of here, it's getting a little too tight for comfort. And then when you're trying to exit, there's really no proper way to do it as well. There's a flat surface here, but then a little slope here, and then you're out. That's not very convenient, is it? Before we talk about why you'd buy the Discovery Sport, let's first start with the fundamentals of what it's like to be in one. 
First thing I noticed in here compared to the Velar and the Evoque is that the ride is a little firmer. It's not uncomfortable but just less of that buoyancy that you get in both the Range Rovers. Insulation is superb on the highways and when you're in traffic, it's just really peaceful in here. Steering is very light, very effortless and sitting position is just nice. But like I said earlier, forward visibility can be a little tricky when you're in tight spaces. And the way this thing drives, it's just got that signature Range Rover gracefulness. It's stable at high speeds and despite it weighing over 2 tons, it's still rather composed with very minimal body roll around the tighter bends with the new, much more rigid chassis that it shares with the Evoque. I think past Discovery owners, if they were to ever get to try this car, they'd be pleasantly surprised at how it drives. It is everything you'd expect a modern Land Rover to be, but there are a few things that was just outright confusing. I find it strange. How is a car that is over two tons, with an image as one of the best off-roaders around and is expected to carry heavy things like a washing machine for example, have less power than an Evoque? It only has 200 horsepower and 320 newton meters of torque. To be fair, I found it adequate in the urban areas, but on the highways, it just makes me feel like it has to really work to give me that performance that I want. And then there's this 9-speed gearbox just like in the Evoque. Long story short, it just needs to be more responsive and more intuitive. Press a little, there's not much going on. Press a little harder and then you get too much. Say if you were to overtake a car and once you have, it's still holding on to that low gear and it's quite annoying. It takes a little longer than expected to go back to a higher gear. And once you're done using the manual, it just stays on to that gear for way too long before it automatically switches to automatic. It's funny how they can offer so much high-tech stuff like with all these multimedia displays, gadgets and of course the all-wheel drive system but when it comes to the fundamentals of a car, the gearbox, it's not quite there. Maybe it would have worked a lot better with the P250 with more power and more torque? I don't know, that's Land Rover's job to figure out. Whereas my job is to evaluate the outcome and so far I can conclude that if you're driving calmly, you're super chilled, it's as smooth and gentle as an English butler. But if you were to be late for dinner with your girlfriend's family, it might make you pull your hair a bit. So I bet you must be asking, why bother with this when the Evoque is so much better looking and costs just a little more, while the Macan drives so much better and the X5 is only 50,000 ringgit more. How do I justify this? I think you can. It's a car that you need, not a car that you want. You'd want a Porsche. Everybody wants a Porsche. Just by holding up that key with that emblem on it, people will start looking at you differently. Unless, of course, you live in an area with a lot more forest and a lot less tarmac. Then you'd want the emblem on that key to say Land Rover. I truly believe people who buy these things buy it for a very specific purpose. The Evoque you buy simply because you want to show off. But in the case of the Discovery Sport, you buy it for its ability to carry things evidently with the large boot, but also its capabilities off-road. They want something a little more upmarket, but ultimately with very good off-road capabilities. I don't think they'll care if the door panels are not lined with soft Nepa leather or it does not come with ambient lighting. What matters more is features like the low traction launch, the auto terrain response, the 600mm wading depth, the go anywhere ability, and more importantly, something that's not a pickup. And in that sense, even with this slightly confused gearbox, I'm still quite confident that it will do everything we did off-road in the Velar quite well. You can watch the video by clicking the above. Although the lack of power, I think, can be a little tricky. I think this car with a diesel engine would be very interesting. How many of us in Malaysia actually go, hmm, I want something a little more upmarket, but I also want it to really work for me when I go camping, fishing, carry my ice boxes, carry my dogs, my pets, my washing machine, or tow my jet ski. And it's one of the reasons why these things are way more popular in places like the UK or the US, where their lifestyles are so different compared to ours. Over here, we're in malls, coffee houses, and in that sense, 
showing up in the Porsche Macan or the Evoque, an X5 even would have a much bigger impact. So in a way, it's a niche car for a very niche group of people. But I think this small group of people who are looking at the Discovery for their very specific purposes would be quite impressed. Although I think they would also agree with me that it could do with a little more power. So is this Land Rover Discovery Sport the car for you? Well, you gotta ask yourself, are you looking for a premium SUV, but one that you would constantly use for off-roady things, outdoorsy things, carry stuff like your sports equipment, barbecue pits, or even a washing machine according to Land Rover. One that is able to tow things, but yet between Monday to Friday, it will carry you in comfort and drives rather well, then yes, chances are there may not be a better alternative than the Discovery Sport. However, if you're looking for a proper seven-seater SUV to carry your passengers in supreme comfort, one that will spend 99.99% of its time in the urban environment, and of course, you're not the kind that would carry mountain bikes into the forest for mountain biking, then perhaps not. You're looking at the wrong car. For more information on the all-new second-generation Land Rover Discovery Sport, do log on to autobus.my. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Unlike the Evoque, this one only comes with the clear hey, side. Stop, stop. You're tall. <laughs> you never cross <laughs> Which you can simply flatten with a switch at the back here. Sorry, doesn't work. Along with the second row, which you can flatten with these switches. Ah!